Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us. This is Business Incorporated live from Lagos. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. South Africa's central bank keeps interest rates on hold. And the world's largest production of the precious metal Anglo-American platinum based in South Africa expects to report another steep decline in half-year profit on Monday the 25th. Plus, Uganda's economy contracts by 1.3% in the third quarter of the financial year. Well, we'll begin with the second largest economy in Africa, and that's South Africa, while the central bank has kept interest rates on hold, saying a weak economy had persuaded it to pause a cycle of hike that it was ready to resume if price pressures picked up again. Now, the Reserve Bank called the growth outlook extremely challenging, with Africa's most developed economy now expected to remain at a standstill in 2016, compared with earlier forecasts of 0.6% expansion. Although inflation was likely to remain above the central bank's 3-6% target until late 2017, it said the inflation forecast was more benign than at its last policy meeting in May. The Reserve Bank has raised rates by 200 basis points since early 2014, though it also kept them on hold in May. And the world's largest production of the precious metal, Anglo-American platinum based in South Africa, is expected to report another steep decline in half-year profit on Monday the 25th. Our reports say the miner is struggling with low platinum prices and the expected decrease in earnings between 54% and 74% is due primarily to adjustments in inventory level in the first half of 2015. Now, trading under the acronym AMPLATS, Analysts are expecting the mining giant to report a net profit drop of between 645 million rand and 1.13 billion rand. The Monday earnings statements will be watched for further updates on the restructuring that the company first announced in June uh, last year. And in the UK, Britain's decision to leave the EU has led to a dramatic deterioration in economic activity not seen since the aftermath of the financial crisis. Our data from Markets Purchasing Managers Index, or PMI, shows a fall to 47.7 in July, the lowest level since April in 2009, a reading below 50 indicates contraction. Both manufacturing and service sectors saw a decline in output and orders. However, exports picked up, driven by the weakening of the pounds. And meanwhile, the new Chancellor of the Exchequer says he may use the autumn statement to reset Britain's economic policy. At the start of a trip to China to strengthen post-Brexit business ties, Philip Hammond said he would review economic data over the coming months. While the European stocks fluctuated today, though most of the indices were in the green and early trade as markets digested the latest preliminary reading of manufacturing and services activity in the Eurozone. Let's now bring in my colleague out there at Frankfurt Stock Exchange, Ulrich Bartz, DWTV, Channels TV financial correspondent, to talk to us about um, those uh, numbers there. Good afternoon, Orich. Well, the Eurozone flash PMI reading... Hi, good afternoon to you. Yeah, the Eurozone flash PMI reading comes in lower today at 51.9. Was it just about the Brexit or there are other factors to consider? I think a uh, terrorist attack in uh, France also played a role for that. Uh, but, uh, of course, the uh, reading for the Eurozone is an 18-month low. Uh, the difference, the little drop to June, um, is a little drop, uh, but still the overall trend uh, is somewhat worrisome. Uh, the Brexit is making itself being felt. Uh, the people conducting the poll market, uh, who asked 5,000 corporations for their view, on economic activity and hiring, um, said that uh, uh, the Brexit, of course, makes itself felt through slower revenues, 
to uh, Britain from the from the eurozone, and also because the pound dropped, uh, there's less money that uh, returns to the eurozone from business that perhaps was uh, a little bit more lucrative before the Brexit. Uh, the situation in Britain uh, more dire, as you just uh, reported, but um, the market says there are also some encouraging factors. Uh, the fact that uh, Germany and, and France, the two heavyweights in the eurozone, are developing in a relatively robust way, and that uh, firms are still hiring. Uh, that there are still new jobs being created. Now, talking about um, Germany, let's look at the factory output, which is, of course, at um, 27 months high as employment punches higher. How mm. sustainable is this? Well, I think uh, that, that uh, the German situation is uh, going to continue to be quite good in the near term. Uh, it could be affected, of course, by uncertainty uh, over the Brexit, uh, terrorist attack in France, perhaps, uh, but also the Turkish situation. That's coming in now as we move forward uh, in the next couple of months, and it's a little bit difficult to forecast uh, what that will mean immediately. But German industry is strong. It's not just uh, act active in Europe, uh, but in North America as well, in China, around the world. And uh, there's a relatively strong situation by worldwide active companies here in this country. And uh, people do expect the labor market to continue to be very strong here in Germany. Uh, you hear that a lot of companies are still actually looking for qualified uh, workers and other staff. Our oil reach um, was saw the earnings season continuing this week with a number of upsets from Lufthansa, EasyJet and Boeing. What's your outlook for next week? Take us through what, what is likely to hold markets in the green or in the red as the case may be. <laughs> That's right. It's difficult to say. Sometimes uh, someone like Volkswagen comes up unexpectedly in this week and says that profit is higher and suddenly the share takes off and uh, they're likely to be surprises next week as well. Mm. And there are so many heavyweights so we just don't have enough air time to go uh, through them. I picked out a few highlights. Uh, there's the Deutsche Bank, uh, there's Bayer, uh, there's BASF uh, here from Germany. Volkswagen is coming through again with a more uh, detailed report and uh, from uh, the internet national sphere we have Facebook coming through and Apple and Apple is always one uh, that can turn uh, a dour market uh, uh, exploding or the opposite and uh, what's also important are a couple of economic dates um, here in Germany economic sentiment the IFO business climate and the consumer sentiment coming in and, of course, one of the events next week, also the Fed, the U.S. Central Bank, coming uh, through with, an, with a statement at the end of a two-day meeting on rates. And people will be very, very closely and anxiously awaiting that result. Right, Orich. Uh, well, we'll wait and see what next week, next week holds for the market. In the meantime, enjoy your weekend. Orich Bart, DWTV Channel's TV financial correspondent. Well, we'll move on now. European Central Bank President Mario Draghi says it is too early to assess the impact of Britain's shock vote to leave the European Union on the Eurozone's fragile economic recovery. Speaking after the ECB opted to keep its interest rates and stimulus unchanged, he said the ECB's accommodative monetary policy and central bank's pledges to provide liquidity had helped keep market stress contained after the vote. Following the UK referendum on EU membership, our assessment is that euro area financial markets have weathered the spike in uncertainty and volatility with encouraging resilience. The announced readiness of central banks to provide liquidity if needed and our, our accommodative monetary policy measures, as well as a robust regulatory and supervisory framework, have all helped to keep market stress contained. Financing conditions remain highly supportive, which contributes to a strengthening in credit creation. Given prevailing uncertainties, the Governing Council will continue to monitor economic and financial market developments very closely and to safeguard the pass-through of its accommodative monetary policy to the real economy. We decided, as I said, that over the coming months when we have more information, including new staff projections, we'll be in a better position to reassess the underlying macroeconomic conditions. 
And uh, no attention was, was really given to discuss specific instruments at this point in time. If warranted to achieve its objective, the Governing Council will act by using all the instruments available within its mandate. We'll take a quick break now and we'll return a focus on Nigerian economy. Do stay with us.